Coming up, I've got my friend Mariah Lichtenstern, who runs her own VC venture capitalist firm, to tell you what you should do before you reach out to a venture capitalist and when is it the right time to actually do so. Stay tuned. What is up, App Nation? It is Steve P. Young, founder of AppMasters. Dot com, the place you go when you want action-packed content in the app business. And today is a snippet from our previous virtual summit with my friend, Mariah Lichtenstern, who is the co-founder of Diversity Ventures. And I'll link it up into the YouTube description so you can learn more about her venture capitalist firm. She's a great person. And if you're in the Sacramento area, definitely reach out to her. But in this video, Mariah talks about whether a founder should actually seek venture funding and when you've built up a little bit of traction, when is it the right time to actually approach a venture capitalist? Some great knowledge here. The audio is somewhat okay on that, but make sure you watch because it is some phenomenal content that Mariah provides. So let's get to Mariah. Is there anything that like founders, I mean, think we're a little bit delusional on that. We think we have it all. We have it all figured out. Is there anything that I think maybe like self-reflection that we should be doing as a founder before we go to a VC and be like, you know what, I got what it takes, especially as a first time founder. Mm -hmm. It's funny because, you know, I'm a, I'm a founder too. And so um, it's interesting as you progress in your company, in your business, in life, you kind of look back sometimes and hindsight is 2020, right? Um, and so now it's interesting when from this side of the table, I look back at, you know, my entrepreneurial endeavors. And when I look at, new founders and i just see things like i've been there i you know and let me just give you some tips <laughs> that that you don't recognize now and one of the the one of those things that kind of stands out to me that you probably wouldn't expect is that a lot of founders think they need to raise money and they don't they really don't like that should be the last consideration when building your business. And oftentimes they think, well, I need money to build this business, so I'm gonna go raise money. And then they're spinning their wheels and not realizing why they're not able to raise. And they don't actually take the time to learn what the investor's mentality is, like what their business model is. And if you're going out to fundraise, then the investor becomes your client and you have to know your client. Like that's number one in business, right? You, you have to know what your customer wants and you know customer service so you have to really look at your economics your stage your market everything and see if you're investment worthy so i would say that you know that's one of the first things is that entrepreneurs think that they need to raise money and the truth of the matter is you probably need to bootstrap you probably need to figure out some friends and family money some grant money some hustle money i mean look at airbnb for example i love their story because no one believes that you know, these founders with a marketing design background or mostly design background could launch a tech company. And, you know, it wasn't high tech, right? But what did they end up doing? It was election season. They sold Obama O's and Captain McCain Crunch or whatever. And that's how they bootstrapped their company. So it may not be, you know, your initial idea. Sometimes people don't know what they need. Um, and sometimes investors don't recognize the domain that you're an expert in. So, you know, find some way to bootstrap and validate your market because what investors want to invest in is traction. They want to know that you've identified the channels where if we pour money on those channels, we can just, you know, predict the return. That's what we want. So I would say that number one thing probably that I encounter is entrepreneurs who think that they need money and they don't need money yet. The other thing I want to move back to is you talked about traction, you know, maybe possibly raising a family and friends round. So how do you know as a founder, like, okay, I'm ready to talk to Mariah. I think this is, I'm at the right stage when I can approach a professional VC and kind of really, you know, accelerate things. Well, for me, you know, I'm willing to talk to founders at idea stage. If it's not something that's, you know, ready for institutional investment, you know, an advisory role might make sense. You know, maybe the non-dilutive capital route, that fiscal sponsorship might make sense. Maybe going into a founder institute or other accelerator might make sense. Um, so I'll talk to people at idea stage. Um, but I think, you know, I'll quote one of my favorite VCs. Um, that's uh, Mark Suster. He's at Upfront. And he has an amazing blog. If you guys haven't seen it, check it out. Both sides of the table is what it's called. Um, and have just in, just an incredible repository of, of knowledge about venture capital. And he's also been a founder. So again, both sides of the table. 
And he has a particular blog post, I think it's called Lines Not Dots. And that's his, you know, um, method of investing. And I think it applies to most investors. So especially if you don't know someone and you don't have like a warm referral that's from a really trusted source, you know, when you first meet a founder, if you're not 100% sure, like, whoa, this is like, I got to get in this because this is amazing. Like, I don't want to miss it. I, I will take a risk on this. This is just like, wow. If it's not that, which like 99.99999% of companies are not, then you're going to say, okay, that's interesting. Here's a little dot. And then, well, I guess if you're, here's a little dot. And then over time, we want to see, here's a little dot. And oh, here's some adversity. And oh, wow, they bounced back from that really nicely. That shows me resilience. And then, oh, look at this. Okay. All right. Oh, they're taking off. Now it's time. So, you know, develop a relationship so that we can see, do you have integrity? Um, are you someone that I want to work with? How do you respond to failure, rejection, success? Does it go to your head? Like, we get to know who you are and whether you're someone that we want to spend like 10, 5, 10 years investing in, right? Because you'll hear it said oftentimes that um, in, investing is a marriage, right? So. Who do you want as your roommate? Who do you want as someone who's going to be calling you on the late night? Right. You, you know, you want to work with someone who you kind of have a sense of who they are and that you can trust and enjoy working with. I'm back. All right. If you want the full interview, you know where to go. Go to appmastersacademy.com, appmastersacademy.com, where you can access all the interviews that we did for our virtual summit and the past virtual summits, along with our entire playbook on ASO, Apple features, influencer marketing, PR, anything you can possibly imagine about growth and monetization and retention for the app space is all under appmastersacademy.com. Make sure you hit subscribe and I'll see you on the next video. Peace. Check out the top video if you want to learn more about how do you sell your business, how you sell your app business for maximum value. And check out the bottom video if you want to see a ringtone app that is making over $400,000 a month. Make sure you hit subscribe by clicking my face right there somewhere in the bottom. See ya.